Uh, I'm going to do a check here. Go ahead and uh, talk, Nima. I'm recording. One, two, three, talk, four. Talk, talk. One, yeah, two, one, three, two, three, four. four. One, yeah. two, three, four. Yeah, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Yeah. God, I work so fucking hard on this, man. I just want to give hey, up. Calm no one, down. No one's helping, man. I just want to give don't, up. Just don't give up. Fucking give up. Don't give up. All right. Don't stop. All right. Shit, man. All right, hang. Talk a little more. Talk your. Because you talk, always talk, test, talk. and then your night like louder when we do it. You, you go. Yeah. I am testing. I am testing, and then you're like, "God damn, the government's arresting people for protesting drones." <laughs> so talk like you talk. You want to yell? God damn yeah. it! Eat a piece of shit right now in yeah. your mouth. I don't Swallow know. Swallow it. it. What's ping? Thing. Hey, what's pingum gangum style mean? You haven't heard the song Gangum. Okay, we're, we're almost so. on yet. Anyway. <clears throat> yeah. Are you listening to the LRN? Uh, are you listening to the live feed? You want me I to? Mean, I mean, no. Are you listening to to LRN ads so you can tell when we go on? This I is the uh, Freedom Fiends pregame show. We're on. Right. No, it's the Freedom Fiends actual show now. It's the actual show. <laughs> it's the actual show. Yeah, yeah. it's the Fiends. Yeah. We're, That's uh, what it is. We're trying some interesting things here today. We've, we've, um, first of all, hi Nima Vidati, how are you doing? Hi Michael W. Dean. Today is December second, two thousand twelve. Very pro, very pro. You know, if we're ever gonna get, <laughs> if we're ever gonna get a show on, uh, on uh, Sirius Satellite XM Radio, we got to start doing things like that. You know, I interviewed. Uh, uh mojo nixon the other day who has three shows on there wow and he cusses all non-stop and one of his shows is called like you know rebellious ant cocksuckers or something like that mm. so you know just what channel I, is he on just because oh. free talk live don't cuss that's uh they do have shows on there that cuss so i really think people should start writing to uh serious satellite radio and saying you should have the freedom fiends on there yeah yeah should have but a whole I, Liberty Channel. Why don't they have an anarchist channel on? Or maybe they do. do uh, they? Lying know. Cocksuckers, I'm being told, is the name of the show, in uh, in our oh. chat room. And we have a chat room now. Two things we're doing <laughs> extra today. One is we have a chat room. If you go to freedomfeeds.com, there's a pink coffee icon over on the top right, near the top right. Click on that, and you can go in the chat room. You can make up a uh, username, or it'll set one for you. But it's better to make one up that sounds like a real person's name, so we know you're real. And not a yep, government yep. bot. So... Yep. that's one thing we got a chat room and we're also rebroadcasting on the lrn feed uh on our feed which is the blue listen link on freedomfiends.com it's the blue uh speaker icon we want people testing that tell us how it's working Although What's people up, seem to be having a problem with um with stuttering i've told them to refresh it could be refreshing but didn't we have a bit rate problem at one point like the bit oh, rate was 128 see. and we had to down res yeah. it or something yeah let's check the stream setting it says 128 oh and ours is 64 is let's, it i thought ours, let's, oh, ours okay. is 64 is it 64 or 128 no ours is 64 that is the problem man yeah it was set okay. for the uh the the yeah. So, so it's settings. jogging and trying to keep up with yeah. the too fast bit rate okay. that we're sending to We it. had it set for yeah. the Adam Curry uh, show rate. It just globally took it over. So we're not on that uh, network anymore. No agenda global mm. radio. We said bye-bye to the Curry. It was too spicy. Too many stomach problems. Yeah, I'm saying it was from, literally. Um, it Literally, it made, it made us have stress stomach aches. But apparently yeah. that wasn't all because I was yelling at you before. the. We didn't record, but a few people heard it live. Yeah, I was, you were three minutes late. And a, I was few, like, a few lucky people got to hear Michael freak out at me. Uh, I know. I, I'm, I'm that lucky all of the time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, it's you okay. know, I'm trying to like, I'm trying to be the like the state and get you to, you know, if I punish you hard enough, you'll, you'll show up, which really oh, you'll, pro you'll probably just run away and go, fuck this. I'll start my own thing. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah. No man, it, it makes it makes it interesting. You got to have those little stresses, conflict. I think. Is the S -S yeah, drama. In, in so life, to make it interesting, we left the, uh, the Curry's network over technical differences instead of creative differences that people or technical usually difficulties. Yeah, it was technical yeah. differences. Uh, we like to, you know, when we're told we're going to be on at three thirty, we like it to actually start at three thirty rather than at four oh five when we're screaming and pulling out our hair. Have someone go, "Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't feed the hamster on mm -hmm. the wheel." And, press a button and get it going <laughs> yeah well last thursday's show it wasn't happening as as was very usual you know we try to start the show and people are in the chat room are like uh where are the fiends i w i came here for the fiends why aren't fiends here and <laughs> give we're me like, my fiends well, give me my fiends i'm fiending for the fiends and so we decided you know f it let's just do our show and pretend the curry stream doesn't exist which is what we did and then like an hour later people in the chat room are like oh we can hear the fiends yay it's like that's no way to do a show man so yeah and 
I was thinking we should, you know, try it a little bit more, but, you know, we've been trying it for two months, and it happens more often than not, like, more than 50% of the time, so, uh, we've decided to take, take, we're still gonna do a Thursday show, every Thursday, so the show still exists, we're gonna still call it The Fiend's Agenda, uh, you know, that's our name that we came up with, uh, you know, and it's different, it's not The Fiend's No Agenda, it's The Fiend's Agenda, so it's not, you know, too much of a ripoff on Adam Curry's network. It's a nod and to Adam Curry for inventing podcasting. That's it. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Uh, we're going oh, to actually still stream it I'd love him to come after us for intellectual property. I don't think he will. That'd be pretty nah, silly. He won't. He won't. If he were that kind of guy, he would have patented podcasting and been a millionaire well, or else no one would ever have podcasted. No, nah, he wouldn't have been. A, yeah, no one would have ever podcasted. It'd be a non-entity. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, and our show is going to start at a little different time, a half hour later. It's going to be uh, four to six p.m. East Coast time, right? On Thursdays. Yeah. East Coast time. Yeah. Yep. 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 That'll be. Uh, someone has the username Central Scrutinizer. That's awesome. <laughs> in the uh, in the chat room. Oh, well, we got a good maybe, bunch of little. Maybe it's chatting. the actual Central Scrutinizer. Yeah. Maybe it is. Turing Machine, Punk Off Girl, Kyle W., Central Scrutinizer, yeah. Mr. Abstracto, Nima Fiend, and Michael Dean. So, yeah, we set up this. C uh, Central Scrutinizer says his stream is working fine. Maybe maybe that fixed okay. it. fixed it. Yeah, I think he's. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't. Yeah, yeah, I think that was it. Okay, so I'll. Or maybe uh, it's just because he has that. expensive government bandwidth and so uh, nothing ever stutters for him. Yeah, and if, and if, you know, any kids came in and uh, started playing Netflix and World of Warcrafts, he would just pull out his sidearm and shoot them because that's what the government would do. <laughs> Speaking of which, we're broadcasting live today from. Um, I'm, I'm live from Burbleson Air Force Base or Burbleson Air Base. Burbleson? <laughs> What do you mean by that? That's from Dr. Strangelove. Ah, uh, uh, it's been a while. You, yeah, you watched it recently. And you well, you know, I watched it. I've talked about it before, and I, I remember yeah. some of it, but I watched it like 20 years ago drunk. And so I watched mm -hmm. it last night. And it was like watching it anew for the first time. I mean, nice. And nice. it was pretty damn good. It's an amazing movie. It's really funny, and I love it. Yeah, I guess I haven't watched it since I've been a libertarian, so maybe I should watch it again, too. You really should. It's made yeah. in 1964, the year I was born, and uh, oh, nice. it's just, it's like totally current. You know, most old, good anti-war stuff is. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, for those yep. who don't know, it's a Stanley Kubrick movie. Um, and in the end, it's, it's we've got some very iconic things that has been referenced a million times, and you've probably seen the references, uh, like a lot of Kubrick stuff, like like that image of the guy riding the nuclear bomb or the atomic bomb, like a cowboy. That's that's from uh, Doctor Strange Love. Slim Pickens, yeah. Slim Pickens. Oh, that was his name. Yeah, it's a yeah. great name. Yep. Yeah, yeah. They uh the the release date of that movie was November whatever sixty three. It was the and it was the day that uh, Kennedy was shot. So they immediately like pulled it and ah. uh, didn't release it for three months later. And they changed a line in it. They dubbed a the line. There's there's a scene where they're gonna probably be crashing the plane that has the bomb on it, and they pull out their like Air Force emergency, you know, like survival kits, and it's like one pack of chewing gum one pack of food rations one pack of cigarettes and then it's got like uppers downers antibiotics morphine uh tube of lipstick pair of nylons and slim pickens character says man you could have a pretty good weekend in vegas with that <laughs> and i'm thinking like you know it's got speed and nylons and lipstick you probably have a pretty good weekend in a hotel room by yourself in vegas with that but originally the line <laughs> originally the line was you could have a pretty good weekend in dallas with that and after huh. Kennedy was shot, they had him dub it and change it to Vegas. Weird. Weird. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Well, you um, know. So what, what I remember from the movie more than anything, what I guess I took away from it um, was that because because in the end, doesn't the world go to like nuclear war? Like the world gets destroyed. Isn't that pretty much what the impression yeah, you're left with? Yeah. Basically, yeah. it's like a rogue general like sends a plane and says we've been attacked by Russia, sends right. him in to drop a bomb, tells him to turn the radio off so they can't be called back. Yeah, yeah, he sort of, uh, I wouldn't say forces us into a nuclear war, but he, he uses lies and treachery to precipitate a nuclear war that he wants for his own reasons. To and, protect and I guess his the, precious bodily fluids. His, his precious bodily fluids because the communists were fluoridating the water. <laughs> yeah, which is weird because, you know, I think of people worrying about fluoridation as a communist plot as like a modern thing, like an Alex Jones thing, but... Uh, people have been yakking about it as a problem since it started in the 40s. Right, right. Well, I think it is a problem, but uh, that's a tangent here. I, I, I want to say, I, to me, the moral of the story was 
when you have massive apparatuses or apparati, I don't know, uh, massive institutions like the military and the government that have the power or the ability to annihilate the whole world, and then you leave it in the hands of humans, which are obviously fallible and flawed and prone to mental problems, uh, like the crazy general here, uh, it's inevitable that something bad can and probably will happen. I think that's the moral of the story. Is you shouldn't have these giant institutions that have this power in the first place because you're never going to have somebody uh, in charge of them that is a complete saint. And it is possible that you'll have somebody that is an evil psycho. Anti-drone activists could get seven years for irritating U.S. Air Force colonel. Ah, that that's a nice bump. So that's our teaser. We'll come back with that uh, very soon after we sell some things. Yeah. Fiends Torrance, Fiends Torrance. Every time you seed, the state dies a little bit more. <laughs> that's what it says it's on the feed. Seed. That's what the feed's yeah. called now. Nice. A science fiction comic adventure from Big Head Press. Quantum Vibe. It's year 2523. There are colonies on Venus, Mars, and Mercury. People travel in bubbles, fly at hyperspeed. With brain implants and artificial gravity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. Quantum vibe. There's a robot girl and zany creatures made with genetically engineered features. And corporate villains crave the opportunity to steal a profit from others' ingenuity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant Set out on an adventure through the solar system On a secret mission to find the key To access new frontiers and save liberty QuantumVibe.com Want to contribute to liberty but short on cash? You can help the Freedom Fiends without even spending a post-1964 dime. Download U-Torn and start seeding Fiends episodes and DVDs to help keep us drone-proof. There's a Torrent Club link at the top of FreedomFiends.com. There you'll find our Torrent RSS feed and instructions to grab past episodes and automatically download new ones, even while you're away from the computer. You'll also get special episodes of The Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo days or even weeks before regular podcast subscribers who aren't torrenting. Leave your computer on, seating the torrents while you're at work or asleep. The more people seating the fiends, the more drone proof will be when the boot comes down. They're not like uh, Radio Network at LRN. They're not like, you know, on the you Curry show where some of them are like gun grabbers or I know. To I know. In doing so, oh, they'll we'll show up. We need to get more popular like Curry. Yeah. I'm recording already. We're coming back now, I think. Come back now. After this after the Bang Brother spot website, as well as files that will allow you to make your own custom banners and graphics. No, this is a whole ad. Promote.lrn.fm and help bring new listeners to the Yeah, but I'm recording cuz you know. We got 40 seconds. Cuz you know. Cybersecurity has are a brilliant uh, between politics every day God, it's annoying people we'll access the internet without ever check <sighs> I'll, I'll I'll keep my ear on it yeah massive asperest asperatus sounds apparatus. better apparatus yeah asperatus oh yeah. asperat ah <laughs> yeah i like to chat i like to chat man i like it better than phone calls cuz phone calls always sound bad and and uh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's good times. Chat, is, chat helps the show, man. Chat helps the show. Uh, Let's talk. Okay. Hold on. We got Bang Brothers, so we're going to come back soon. Uh, I'll, bring us, I'll bring us back. That's amp. All right. LRN.FM. Yo, it's the Freedom Fiends Live. Y'all already know what it is, but uh, you can. You can chat in. Screw calling in. Let's let's do chat today. So if you want to talk to the fiends, you've got a question. Um, go you're not to freedomfiends.com slash blog. You're not going to give up the number? No, no. Okay, what's on uh, the blog? It's freedomfiends.com. Uh, go there, and on the right, you should see a fiends chat thing. It's like a little pink button. Yeah. It's cute. Oh, you don't have to go to the blog. It's also on the front page of the freedomfiends.com site up near the top. A lot more ah, easier. A yep. lot easier to find. So, okay. Um... Yeah, we're going to talk about this horrible thing that happened. Anti-drone activists could get seven years for irritating U.S. Air Force colonel. <laughs> I don't know. At this point, it's kind of like, well, another horrible thing happened today that's more horrible than the thing yesterday. Now, 
let's just skip this. Just screw this. Everyone's probably talking about this. Everyone and his brother. I got something better to talk about that's more important. It's Claire Wolf's new book. Oh, I mean, why complain? Yeah. Why complain when we can talk about something that can actually help you? Okay. Totally. Claire Wolf, OG libertarian who, you know, influenced Boston Tea Party to become a writer, has written a book called Rats. Your Guide to Protecting Yourself Against Snitches, Informers, Informants, Agents Provocateur, Narcs, Finks, and Similar Vermin. And it is, <laughs> I read it last night. It's about 80 pages long, PDF. It's free. It's on the nice. Freedom Fiends BitTorrent link, which you can find by going to the Freedom Fiends site and clicking on Fiend uh, Torrent Club at the top. And you can, there's an RSS feed and instructions on how to put it into uTorrent to constantly download everything we do. And, uh, and you know, the more you seed, the more drone proof we, we become, we'll be unstoppable when we're in Gitmo, you can just turn it back on and seed 24 seven. And every time you seed, yep. the state just, just throws up a little bit and gets sicker, <laughs> but you can <laughs> also get idea. it by going to her site, which is rats dash no snitch.com. And for those playing the home version here, uh, I will put it in the, in the chat room. So get Excellent. that book before it gets droned. That book, and it actually talks about Stacey Litz. It doesn't even really. I thought it could have bashed her a lot more than it did. It was kind of like, well, she was dumb and blah blah blah. But uh, yeah, it uses her as a case study. I love the cover too. It's got a, a stop sign, a government octagon stop sign. It says "Stop snitching," which I thought was great. Uh, which is are great. Are they from fans, like, or are they? Are, are they? I didn't know Claire Wolf was that savvy. I thought she was kind of old lady squarish. Not not, you know, hating on her. I think she's awesome. She's an amazing writer. I just thought she was kind of you know lives in the woods and chops well, her own wood kind of thing. Yeah. Well, she I, yeah, she's a hermit. Her uh, she's good friends with uh, with Mama Liberty, and it's like you know. I don't know. Grandmas are hipper up in this part of the world, I guess. Uh, you know, yeah. Mama Liberty taught me to use encrypted email and, uh, and Claire Wolf, uh, writes a book about stop snitching, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, is there an audio book yet? Cause I'd love to listen to this while I'm working. And if, if not, would she be willing to let us voice it or do it or produce it? I don't even want to touch it. I don't know. You know, actually I think it I works better as a, it works better as a PDF. But uh, I'm sure, you know, well, it's Creative Commons, but it's a more limited license than her. I'm sure she'd let you do it. Well, uh, if you yeah. want to do it, I don't want to do it. You want to do it? Okay. Um, I just, I'm too busy. I'm too busy running The Fiends 20. <laughs> if you, if you got the time to do an audio book for her, how come you don't have time to show up for Fiend <laughs> stuff I need you? No, I don't want you doing it. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, mm -hmm. I, I thought that'd be a cool that'd be a cool fiends project to get it out there and show. Hey, we can do audio books for cool people. Plus, you know, she likes us and knows us, and I don't know, just be a a win win. But uh, yeah, yeah. We, we are busy. We are busy. I mean, I've got other projects that are you know a fourth finish that I should be doing instead. Yeah, so. and but, you know, um, there there is a recording of me yelling at you that's going to go on. The, I'm sorry, man. I just get. I just you know. Nobody works cool. as hard as me and I get pissed off. That's cool. And you know, you, you, you are really good about coming through with most stuff and you're, you're there as much as you can be and still have a family and life and a job and where I don't work a full-time job. So, um, uh, yeah, but you know, I said something, I wasn't really directed at you, but something that I like to tell people is that there are a lot of people, a lot of libertarians, anarchists, anarchy capitalists, voluntarists, agorists, et cetera, uh, freedom fiends. We'll just call them freedom fiends, small uh, F, small F. Um, uh -huh. a lot of freedom fiends, you know, basically say, well, there's only one rule in life. Don't initiate aggression. And I say, and I didn't make the, I did not make this up. Uh, Richard Marbury did. He said, there's only two rules in life. Don't initiate aggression and keep your word. And to me, keep your word includes be where you, be on time. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I really, that's something I want to put out there. Like, you know, I bash people for begging to make their libertarian stuff. And I'm like, that's not really setting a good example of teaching people how to run their own economy. Yeah. And I, I would also say that if you want to be, eventually respected by the world you know keep your word and being three minutes late with me is not breaking your word but in general like a lot of people who have these high morals and say well everyone must do this and the government is bad because blah, 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 i don't think have high morals or maybe morals isn't the word but like high value as a as an example because they don't keep their word well nobody's perfect and i am can learn and they I can am. grow yeah, but you're what forty eight or something. You've had oh, wait, a lot. I'm, I don't, what, what? I'm checking my wrists. I don't have holes in them. 
<laughs> well, when you were when you were the age of say most young anarcho capitalists, uh, what were you doing? Right? I mean, nobody's perfect. Especially young people have to take time to figure things out, and sometimes they latch on to um, a philosophy and they they have it there in their their mind and are high minded about it. But it can take time to get yourself into the habits. You know, thoughts eventually become actions. But the thing is, which eventually become habits, which which builds character. All of that stuff. Stepping, no, stool. I can tell everyone how to avoid even having to make all those mistakes. Like I've written a book on that. It's called User's Manual for the Human Experience. It's on our torrent link as an audio book and as a PDF, and you can buy it as a paperback on Amazon. You know, the other day I came up with a line, the fiends, we've got a link for that, you know, kind of a takeoff on, mm -hmm. we got an app for that because like three people in a row, like one guy I am me and said, how do you do a podcast? And I'm like, here's my link on that. <laughs> and someone else is like, okay, how do you do the RSS torrent thing for your feed? And I'm like, okay, here's the link for it. And somebody mm -hmm. else is like, you know, how do I get rid of my abusive girlfriend? Who's a drug addict? I'm like, okay, here's a link for that. You know, the fiends, we've got a link for that. Yeah. So yeah, basically, totally oh, although you really, you know, you can tell anybody how to do things with life kind of stuff, but they're not going to get it until they make the mistakes. But you can avoid a lot of mistakes. Uh, an example is like I've gone out and spent all this money on different microphones and pretty much mm -hmm. settled on a microphone I knew about 10 years ago. I should have just gone and bought it, you know. And uh, I did the same thing with guns. Like I went, you know, my wife bought a Glock 23 at the advice of Boston Tea Party. I went out and bought 30 different guns, sold most of them, lost money on each one and ended up with a Glock model with 23. Glock 23. Yeah. And I guess that that's useful because I've learned a lot about guns and learned a lot about microphones. But really, I should have just gone with the first choice, you know, the thing that works first time. I don't know. Should you have? I kind of feel like we all have to make our own journey. And No, uh, everyone has it, to make my journey. <laughs> uh yeah yeah well okay so if we have a link for that uh kyle ben says how do you smash the state do you have a link for that Touché. Uh, Touché. i think we do it's the book uh what something in the state by uh murray rothbard what is it anatomy of the state it doesn't no. really tell you how though it just tells you anatomy what's wrong of the with state it. is is exactly that i think it's perfectly titled it's an anatomy of the organ the vile organ organism that is the state um yeah as far as smashing it uh that's an ongoing project <clears throat> the link for that is well, the kyle, streaming feed <laughs> we should have kyle call in after the break because uh kyle was trying to tell me something about agorism and how asking for donate i don't know he was telling me anarchy i ain't doing it right or so he must know how to do it right so he should call in after the break i think okay we'll give out the number i don't really know that that's what he was doing but he says um, he says i'm booming i'm gonna turn down my low end a little bit it's because wow. we're so sexy and booming yeah boom yeah. ugh i'm so sick of looking at steve's wedding pics and i'm all out of passive aggressive comments what else am i supposed to do at work all day sick of stalking your ex on facebook yeah are you all out of cute cats and autocorrect mishaps to lol at duh Freedom Fiends to the rescue! The Fiends now have a blog. Read all about the latest tyranny today. Dream about lip pair. Laugh while Western civilization collapses. Just click on the cat icon to the right of freedomfiends.com. Freedom Fiends blog. Read it! You've read books, attended lectures, and you know the Constitution well enough to know it's a well-crafted blueprint to create an ever-increasing federal empire. But there's still one thing missing. Buttons! <laughs> Freedom Fiends now has buttons. We have Freedom Fiends, Anarchy Gumbo, and two designs for guns and weed the road to freedom. Wear them with pride. Use them to start conversations with statists. It's only $6 for four buttons, including shipping. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the link at the top that says buttons. We're not saying the Freedom Fiends are the one true path to anarchist liberation, but it's a good one. If you want to put your voluntarist money where your mouth is, consider making a donation to the Freedom Fiends. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post. Then make a one-time gift via PayPal or set up a monthly contribution of as little as $3. Giving to the Freedom Fiends helps advance education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. The Freedom Fiends. We work hard, so send us some money. I started recording. Yeah. Did you say don't record or do record? I said don't, but whatever. If you're already recording. Well, I think for this single one here, um, it's okay to like... Record the between song banter between break banter. Sure, sure. It's, it's, it's our, kind of since we're trying we're trying new things. Yeah, it's our test. We try things new, to, new things too. Yeah. Okay. So do you know about fun, slapping fun, fun. people around with a large trout? 
Uh, apparently, yeah, it's on the chat room. <laughs> it's, it's, I think there's a command to make it type that. I know that from my days in IRC, that's something I remember. It's, it's how you like say, it's kind of well, like LOL smack. No, it looks like there's a command for various uh, actions, like like stage notes instead of actual dialogue. Yeah, uh, you know, Richard yeah. G raises his hand. Punk off girl yeah. slaps Mister. What's what's the command for that chat room? They're How not going to tell us. Things? Our admins yeah, aren't going to tell us. They they want to be able to do see, it. Only. See, punk off girl just slapped me around with her large trout. Um, hmm. I don't know whether to fill. I don't uh, know when I click that or not. When I, when I click on people, all I'm getting is options to ban them. Oops, banned, <laughs> banned, banned. <laughs> and then I'll be like, I am the king of my own empty chat room. You know, that kind of attitude is why I don't know how to use IRC. They were teasing me before the show because <laughs> like, I'm like, how do I add, how do I claim my okay. own channel is mine? And they're like, man, you don't know. Damn. And, uh, and, and he's like, I'm listening to a, a, an old show you guys right now. And you're talking about all this really intricate audio geek stuff, but you don't know how to use, you know, like modern software recording. And you're like, you don't know how to use IRC. It's like the oldest, simplest technology around. And I'm like, I got on IRC through like AOL in like 94 or something. And everybody on every IRC channel I went into was so fucking rude that I was like, fuck this. I don't want to sit around and be bashed by five nerds. I want to go start an empire where I can talk in one direction to thousands of people. So that's what I put my technical you know, studies into. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I figured out how to actually do things in the virtual world of chat. You just okay. type forward slash uh, thanks thanks punk off girl you t you forward slash me like literally m e and then you type what uh what the action you want to do is so I typed uh, forward slash me eats yummy sandwich made from trout and then it says Nemophine <laughs> eats yummy sandwich made from trout yeah hmm. eats cat and dies that's awful that's horrible <laughs> okay and then how do you slap somebody you type well you slash, just do the same slap. thing but, but type type slap so slap me or Oops. forward slash me slaps michael with oh, i spelled your name wrong. slap nima i bet theme. we look like we sound like idiots trying to learn how to use a chat room <laughs> i know someone's gonna download this as their first episode and be like thanks no i'm gonna go listen to alex jones there's some knowledge there we need irc clients oh okay Wow, it's 1993 <laughs> all over again. I know. God, we're noobs. I don't know. Fuck y'all. Where, where are all the hot chicks? Fuck you. I'm a hot, I, I'm a sexy man that needs a hot chick. Fuck y'all. Tell me. Remember tell the, me. the Futurama chat room? No. Yeah. Oh, maybe. Oh, okay. With the iPhone. Everything I do. And no. Watching no every different. pork I. Every pork. Is when I they want. when they when they when they go to the the internet and it's like an actual virtual reality thing. Oh yeah. They did that on uh, Chappelle's show, too. I liked his better. I like the, uh, hey, where'd you get that song? Well, you can get it there. And it's like 99 cent downloads. And it's two people looking through the bins. And then it's like, or you can go there. And it said, you know, like pirate downloads. And it's this store that like has a siren and looks like it's on fire. And there's thousands of people <laughs> running out of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. We're coming up now. All right. All right. Fiends. Welcome to the Freedom Fiends Live it is our Sunday call in and or chat in show. Uh, it's our it noob December show. Second. You can yeah. you, you can call in and we tell me how to how to do something that six year olds could do in 1991. Yeah, do that, do that. Yeah. Put Michael in his place. <laughs> I guess you can call in if you know the number already. I guess I'm like uh, an idiot boy king because I don't know how to do anything on here, but I can say off with their heads and ban people. <laughs> do you even know how to do that? Try it. Yeah. Try, it. Try to ban me. What happens okay. if you ban me? You really want me to ban you? No, I don't. Ban. Not today. You're banned. Not today, though. Nima Fiend was kicked. Try oh, typing damn. now. See if I, you can. I thought, I thought I was an admin. I thought you couldn't do that to me. Try typing see. something. See if you can. <laughs> People are laughing at the boy king, oh. the retarded boy king oh. kicking you. Yeah, uh, it, it didn't work. It didn't work. Can you unkick me? Uh... Wow, you're not on the list anymore. Okay, admins, how do I bring him off now? <laughs> how do I bring him back? How do I unban him? R.I.P. Nima. Uh, un, un, unban Nima. I really hope this is nobody's first cast for the fiends that they listen to. They're going to be like, this is ridiculous. This is what people think the internet is, is like audio recordings of people playing on chat rooms. 
I don't know how yeah. to bring him back. All right. So okay. anyway, next order of business. Uh, you're banned from the chat room, apparently. But uh, apparently, oh well. <laughs> it was fun while it lasted. Whatever. Yeah. So Claire Wolf's book, Rats. You should go get it. Rats. You know, a couple interesting things from this book. One is that um, she was talking about how there's a snitch culture in America now, and like it's all cops do. Yep. Like mm-hmm. there's this cop. There's this thing that's cited in there that I looked up. It said. It's a cop saying snitches who can get us into places we can't go without them. Narcotics operations would practically cease to function, which is, I think, good to note. It is. It is. And it's also I mean, that's that's the hearing it from the other end of the people. You know, rappers are always talking about what they do to snitches and how a snitch is the worst thing in the world you could be. Uh, It's because of that, because if it weren't for the snitches, uh, they'd all be making money and and having their nice little black market economy, and everything would be pretty much hunky dory. Uh, you know, as far as a black market economy can go, uh, the worst thing that happens to it is the snitches that bring in the cracker cops and uh, who go and raid everybody. Nima, you're unbanned. Come on back in. Hey, how'd you unban me? Um, I don't know. Somebody, one of the other uh, Uber mentors, uh, admins, did it. So. Another thing I learned from Claire's book that was really interesting while you log back into the chat room was that um, a lot of the stuff, okay, like a lot of things that we've talked about, like, man, is that considered entrapment? Like a lot of things that cops and fed cops do now to bust people would have been legally considered entrapment in like the 70s. What changed it? uh, Supreme Court ruling. Supreme Court justice. Yeah, Supreme Court ruled it was okay. Now, the interesting thing is, in a lot of countries that used to be really tyrannical, like Russia, you know, Czech Republic, um, you know, for, former former communist bloc countries that are now uh-huh. democracies of some sort, generally have laws still banning that kind of stuff because they're they're like we don't, you know, as soon as they got rid of the KGB, they're like we're not going to let that happen again. Hmm. So uh, it kind of goes to that thing that you and Stefan Molyneux say of like how the countries that start out the most free end up the most tyrannical. Yeah, yeah. I suppose so. Uh, huh. And what 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 else, what other kind of great things are there like lessons on how to avoid it because the book kind of pitches itself Absolutely. That way. Absolutely. At the top at the top it says this free ebook could help keep you out of prison. I mean this book uh, is worth like I mean she could sell this as a paperback for, you know, 20 bucks easily, 30 bucks and it would be worth it. Is but, it on par with uh, Boston's You and the Police? It's more updated and modern than that. Although yeah. you and the police is the book that brought me from status to minarchist in one night. And it has, well, you and the police is, has a little bit of this stuff in it, but it's a lot more comprehensive. This book is only about avoiding snitches and spotting them and what to do if you spot yeah. them. Well, my, my wife looked at it and what to do the- and what to do if you're in interrogation. Right. And well, and they explain the nine step methodology that cops use in interrogation. So you can recognize ah, it. Ah, really? Okay. Yep. Yeah. So that is that is useful. Um, in in the the website for the book rats uh, hyphen no snitch dot com, uh, it says don't think you're exempt if you're a law abiding citizen. Uh, you may be in danger if you're a political activist, a recreational drug user, a hobbyist or business person who works with sensitive materials, a member of an unpopular religion, a gun owner or dealer, a participant in the underground economy, a photographer, a videographer, a controversial thinker, a writer, or you just happen to hang out with the wrong people. My wife looked at that and she goes. Wow, Wow, you're like all of those things. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like 90% of the country is in that yeah, list. If you point. include unpopular mm-hmm. religions, because I would say at this point, being a Christian is an unpopular religion that gets you looked at by the government. Is it? I guess it depends on where yeah. you're from. I mean, I guess in, in, in California, New York, <laughs> liberal, yeah, urban areas. Yeah, I would suppose it well, is. Well, but- I mean, being a member of, you know, the Catholic church in Boston isn't a problem, but you know, being a member of a homestead church run by a minister with a beard, you know, that meets in a wooden building in Wyoming. That's not part of an organized church is considered suspect. Not in Wyoming though. Yeah. Well, no, right. But by the feds that operate in Wyoming, mm-hmm. that was something Boston right. said. And, that, like, and that's the problem is the fed, the feds in, in that you and the police and you and the police, he defined a cult as, um, you know, like how the state defines a cult. He said it's any religion with less than a million members worldwide that has a bearded leader and meets in a wooden building. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. Nice. So, yeah, uh, I should probably get that book and read it. He says quick read 80 pages, something like that. 
Sorry, my wife was yelling about religions. What? Oh, okay. So uh, it's a quick read, right? Like 80 pages. So I, I probably don't have an excuse for not reading it after a few no, days. No, I read it in a you know, little before and a little after dinner and I was done. I mean, it okay. took me okay. a couple hours. Cool, cool. And I was yeah. reading, you know, I could have read it in less, but I, I really wanted to internalize all the info so I could uh, talk about how great it is. Ah, okay. Rats, okay. your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents, provocateurs, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. Yes, yes. Um, give us a tip. Give us one quick tip on something that maybe we wouldn't think of not to do, but we should not do. Don't ever talk to police. Oh, um, uh, okay. One thing that comes to mind is, and she said, like, I don't recommend doing this, but some people do it, is if you're group is infiltrated by somebody that you're absolutely is convinced you are absolutely convinced they are a government informant trying to take you down or get you to do violent things turn huh. them into the authorities and do it through your lawyer huh. ah okay she said doing it through your lawyer goes along is you can still never talk to police if you do it through your lawyer hmm. although i think the police would want to come and talk to you but you could just say no talk to my lawyer Yep, yep. And I suppose that's important because you also have a record then of uh, you recognizing this person uh, and turning them in for their violent yeah. thoughts. It, it's Didn't, good if, if if you ever do get some kind of right, provocateur right. thing out of your group, you can say, well, that might not have been somebody that was in the group uh, naturally. It might have been somebody who was a uh, some kind of infiltrator because we've had those before. Look at this other case. Didn't that happen with a mosque? Wasn't there some FBI guy at some mosque trying to get people to make bombs and they turned him in to the FBI? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yep. They sure did. I forget the year and the city, but uh, I'm pretty sure that happened. <laughs> that that's a footnote on the fiends. I'm I think sure you <laughs> you you told me about that. I think so. Yeah. 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 I I should go look that up in the show notes. But um, another thing in it is it says like with things like that, keep copious notes of the whole thing, and it shows you how to do it. And one thing I thought was interesting was it said, you know, don't just put the date and the time then put like what the weather was that day because literally that's the first question that lawyers and cops would hmm. ask you in interrogation really? across examination to test your memory like what was the weather like that day sir huh although yeah. i mean can't you just make that up i mean sound confident about it i don't know no no that seems, I mean, that seems like a pretty that seems like a pretty shady thing for cops and lawyers to do i've seen it in, like i've seen day? it on tv in court which doesn't what mean if, it really if, happens, but what if you what if you didn't leave the complex? What if you didn't leave leave the compound that if it, day? Man? If it happened in Wyoming, if it happened in Wyoming, I'd say it was say windy. It was cold. It was, yeah, windy. it was windy and cold. Actually, today I was woken up by the wind. It's sixty five to eighty five mile an hour gusts today and tomorrow. Wow! Like it literally woke me up. It was mind blowing, man. I thought it, the tree it was going to fall it on the house. It gets crazy in Casper. It sure does. But yeah. uh, we'll have more more fiends coming up live in your mouth. In your mouth. Or in, in your ear from our mouth. I like that. Yeah. In your mouth. Ultimate <laughs> statist is a username. I love these names. It's funny. Have you swallowed too much of the state's poison? The Freedom Fiends will stick their fingers down your throat and hold your hair back while you hurl. Check out the new show, The Freedom Fiends Agenda, on Freedom Fiends Radio. Click on the blue Listen link at freedomfiends.com, streaming live every Thursday from 4 to 6 p.m. East Coast, U.S. time on Freedom Fiends Radio at freedomfiends.com. The Freedom Fiends agenda is Michael W. Dean and Nima Badati's fun and feisty chat about market anarchy, self-defense, real money, the digital police state, activism, DIY media, sex pets, and rock and roll. Call in soon before they get droned. Live studio number 307-215-5171 or via Skype to username kittyfeet1. Listen live at freedomfiends.com. That's freedomfiends.com. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. Basic Handgun and Rifle with Jared Waltz. First rule of being alive is you own yourself. 
a groundbreaking approach to firearms and self-defense training. Beautifully filmed and easy to understand instructions make this one a must-have. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. New DVD from Michael W. Dean, available on Amazon. We've been infiltrated. We have to turn them in. Short on cash? Do we? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm emailing the FBI right now. There's someone saying they're the central scrutinizer and the ultimate statist in our group, and we think that they're agent provocateurs. I'm not doing that. We don't need to. At least one of these people has got to be an FBI agent. Well, there's a there's a joke, and she's like in in the Rats book. She's like, you know, the old joke. If it weren't for uh, if it weren't for infiltrating in government informants, some groups would have no members. Yeah, yeah, that's an even better way of saying that. Like the Communist Party would have failed in the fifties, except for the the dues they got. The, the from, government support. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Uh, let's see, so we're back at. Oh, we got a long break. Okay. Yeah. yeah we're back at forty-seven. I'm gonna go get a beverage. PP Kitty. All right. Ah, we care we a alive. lot. It's a Yay. dirty job, but someone's got to do it. I know those guys. Yay. They used to. Bob, bass player from that band bill used to rehearse with uh, a band in my garage when band bomb started and where i slept and had sex with two or more people one or more people well aren't not, you not just lucky good yeah. for you mr i've had a million threesomes well you know the thing that I'm lucky, yourself on the, the only back. really lucky thing the thing that's like cool about all that was i did everything you could possibly do that's fun that could give you aids and i didn't get it I'm so the luckiest think? boy in the world. So man. I'm think? the luckiest boy in the world. <laughs> no, I didn't. I mean, I've been tested. Come on, man. I haven't done anything like that in decades. Yeah. And I've been tested. Yeah. 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 So rats moving on from rats. Rats. So the uh, name of this episode is gentlemen. You can't fight in here. This is the war room, which is the <laughs> best, possibly the best line in Dr. Strange yeah. love. Yes. yes. And excellent. we w- we want us to do a shout out to Maya Axton, who uh, is seating the Freedom Fiends and said oh, she's yeah. going to seat it forever, setting up a spare PC to run nothing but our seeds and a Bitcoin miner. Although I think really two ever, computers would be better than that. Ever, yeah. forever. Yeah, thank you so much. That is that is amazing sentiment. I mean, forever yeah. is a mighty long time. We appreciate that, Maya. And you can get mentioned on air. You don't even have for to donate. For doing awesome things. For we doing totally awesome things. Like, you are awesome. We yeah. like that people donate, but we'd rather uh, – what's really what you would rather do is other people set up other seed boxes on other continents. But, you know, I am us sometimes if you want to know about that. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, I heard this thing. I think it was on Scott Horton, and I'm paraphrasing probably better than he said it because I don't smoke endless amounts of pot or any hey, pot. Hey, <clears throat> he says some awesome things he awesomely did. sometimes. Okay. He said something that burned in my brain so hard I thought I said it, and I posted it as if I said it and then realized I didn't. <laughs> There's something okay. to the effect of going from status to minarchist is a journey of a thousand miles. Going from a minarchist to an anarchist is about one mile more. Why is it so uh, hard for most people to go that last mile after the first thousand? I don't know. It wasn't that hard for me. I guess it's a good question. It, though. it was about the same amount of time for me and it just, it was a click. It, it almost felt natural. Like I didn't feel any kind of extra barrier. Maybe it has to do with age. Uh, maybe it has to do with the amount of old time. Dog. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. Well, kind of. I mean, if if your worldview is shaped by forty years or fifty years of you making money and operating and having a moral code that that jived with the rest of the world, uh, I imagine it would be really hard to completely shake those foundations. Whereas if you're young and you're just learning about things, uh, and you and you, uh, young people tend to have uh, an ability to see the bullshit in this inherent in the system more than anybody else. And a lot of them just say, Oh, well the whole world's BS, whatever. And don't care about it. But I think if you see the world's BS and you come across something as consistent and true, uh, as anarchism, then it's really easy to just say, Oh yeah, well, why didn't I think that the whole time? Yeah. I was trying to break down those barriers when I did that interview with Mojo Nixon the other day, who is, uh, you know, it's interesting the people that get listed on public sites as like American libertarians. Um, and he is libertarian more than most people. You know, I mean, he, but he's kind of half measure about it, not anarchist. And I was calling him on it. I like him a lot. I was trying to shake him up a little bit. You know, he's like, yeah. I was like, how do you feel about drugs? And he's like, uh, well, I, I think all drugs should be legal, not just pot. I think 
pot, heroin, crack, speed. I think they should be completely legal and then taxed, and that would f- fix the deficit. And I'm like, why <laughs> taxed? Why do you want your stuff stolen? Yeah. And he's like, Seriously. well, you know, I don't really like the government, but, you know, they need to take care of, like, the roads and the schools. And I'm like, <laughs> roads. I said, right. zombies say that. Uh, roads. And he got it. He laughed. And he's like, yeah, I know, but, you know, the schools. And I'm like, if anything could be done privately right now, it's the schools. They're really inefficient. They do everything wrong. They do all this indoctrination and they do a really poor job at it. I mean, that's something that literally could be done better by the private market right now, even on the internet. And he's like, yeah, you're right. Schools don't really teach anything. And I'm like, okay, wait. So mm-hmm. you think schools don't do anything, but we need a government so there can be schools. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the kind of like, and he's a libertarian who voted for Obama. Uh, I don't, you know, uh, come on, man. You had a perfectly good Ron Paul there to not get elected. I, who would vote for Obama? <laughs> God, who would I, vote? I don't know. Who would vote? Know. And if you're going to vote, who I mean, would vote my, for Obama? My, my initial thought is somebody who's uninformed. Uh, my second thought is, is maybe somebody who just hated McCain or hates that's what he said. that much. No, he hated McCain that much. Yeah, he was voting, yeah, yeah he was fiend voting phone. against somebody. We got a fiend, fiend caller. Phone. Oh, fiend okay. phone. Cool. I guess fiend take phone. it. Yeah. Hello, fiend. Who is this? Hey, Nima. This is Dave What's from up? Ohio, and I assume Michael is there too. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Hey, um, on on that on the thing you just mentioned, who would vote for Obama? Um, I met a lady a couple of weeks ago at an art show who was wearing a Ron Paul pin. And she came up, you know, she came up to our table and was, you know, I noticed her pin and, and she made mention of it and, and yada, yada. And she said, you know, we kind of got to talking about it. I didn't say much. My girlfriend was talking more with her, um, you know, cause I figured she was a minarchist and, you know, mm-hmm. I wasn't going to get into it with her. And um, <laughs> she said, I was so pissed off by the way that, that the Republicans treated Ron Paul that I went and voted for Obama. Oh, and so, I was kind of like funny. Ugh, well, you know? <laughs> it's 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 a reason people don't usually vote away. I, that's what's intriguing about it to me because usually it's, well, I don't like Obama, but I hate Romney more. But she did it because she hates Republicans for screwing Ron Paul. That's pretty funny, actually, to me. Right. I I, I thought it was interesting. I mean, you know, and I said as much. Um, you know, the girlfriend outed me as an anarchist right, right there. You right anarchist. Before that. And I, I was, did, you know, and did, I'm like, I, you know, I don't have a problem with that necessarily, but you know, it's, it's kind of a, and she's here laughing what? now. <laughs> yeah. Did, did she out you so that you could be dismissed? Like, Oh, don't listen to him. He's just an anarchist kind of a thing. Or No, no, not at all. I, I, um, it's, I, you'd have to ask her actually why she actually did it. But, um, <laughs> You know, I I gave the kind of like you know almost because uh, that's a that's a I call it dropping the a bomb. You know, that's that's a <laughs> it's a pretty pretty. Uh, uh, I like that. dropping the a bomb. I like the that aggressive yeah. thing yeah. to do right in, in front of somebody that you you know that you really don't know. Yeah. Um, Although I'm a big yeah, I mean, I'm a big fan of that. Nice I love. All, but- I love to say that to people whenever a political conversation comes up. I like to drop that off. You know, right out of the gate. Uh, and just say, hey, well, you I'm know, an anarchist, so, you know. I I hear you, and I, I do, you know, I do sometimes, but I, I like to, it just depends on the situation. You know, if I'm mm-hmm. if I'm in an yeah. aggressive mood, like, you know, I'm going to really scare your ass, I'm going <laughs> to, you know, the macho libertarian fight. Well, well, of course, all all schools, which should be private, should have cocaine vending machines inside them, you know. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. But I, you know, I, I tend not to, you know, I tend, I, like I said, I, I tend to just, you know, use that very judiciously. And that wasn't, yes. you know, that wasn't a venue where I was really going to go out like that. Because there were, like, a, you know, a guy right across the way from us was, was wearing his, you know, his, uh, you know, I served on the USS uh, Indiana or whatever in in, uh, in uh-huh. World War One with a bunch of pins on his. Head. You know, so it's it's kind of like that. You know, you gotta you gotta pick your Use battles and and yeah, be aware yeah. of your surroundings. Yeah, yeah, I think you're so, right. I mean, take take everything on a case by case basis. I mean, when I was a reporter on Memorial Day, I didn't call everybody war criminals. You know, I had a camera in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> I was representing right, the news yeah, station. You know, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't. You know, that's that's kind of like you know a uh, I can whip any man in the bar kind of right. situation. You know, you you don't want to be that guy. 
Sometimes so. you do, but that sometimes you don't. <laughs> it's, I guess, the way I view it. You yeah. don't always want to. But, well, it's, uh, it's, a lot yeah. easier. it's a lot easier from the comfort of your home, you know, behind your keyboard oh, yeah. or whatever. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. You know. uh-huh. <laughs> behind, behind your microphone. Yeah. You know, in the book, in a right. couple of Boston Tea Party's books, he recommends that when people, it was specifically about guns, when, pe- when, you're, when you're at the next table at a restaurant and people talk about why all guns should be banned, he's like, interrupt their dinner and t- get up in their, their grill about it. I was like, wow. Huh. Yeah, I mean, I don't know about that because, you know, my, my wife always brings this up to me because she's a vegetarian and she says her thing is to not be one of those crazy vegetarians that's always like getting yeah. disgusted when people eat meat and telling them that they're they're immoral and they're wrong because it, it gives people who are vegetarians a bad name and then people think all vegetarians are like that. We don't really want to be right. the group. people. We don't want people to classify us, oh, those crazy anarchists who will come and yell in your face about how you're a murderer. <laughs> well, I we think don't it's want like that the, to be the, you know, our moniker. The AA, the AA thing is a good lesson there of uh, our public relations policy is based on attraction rather than promotion. Or, you know, attraction yeah. rather than aggression. <laughs> right. You Be must practice yeah. the non-aggression principle. Stop eating right now. I'm going to throw your food on the table and tell you about the non-aggression principle. Yeah. <laughs> Look at all you dirty drunks. Would you, you know, put down that bottle of Thunderbird and follow me and get Although, you know what? Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> that's the only thing that works. All right. Thanks for calling, man. Yeah, that's, Th- thanks, man. That's true. Love yeah, the call. Take care, guys. Worms. You too. Peace. <laughs> That's funny. That's good. <laughs> it was really funny. Worms. This is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends. I've been on the World Wide Web since its inception in 1994. I've tried dozens of web providers in that time. The only one that hasn't broken my heart is HostGator. HostGator has unlimited server space, unlimited throughput, and a guaranteed uptime of better than 99.9% for only $150 a year. You can pay a little less elsewhere, but you'll pull out your hair dealing with anyone else. HostGator has great service and unlimited tech support only a phone call away 24-7, 365. HostGator is where pros like the Fiends host because we know how to do it right. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the HostGator affiliate link on the right sidebar to sign up today. What does freedom mean? Tune in to LRN.FM to find out. LRN.FM is the Liberty Radio Network, a collection of live talk radio and podcasts, all coming from a principled pro-liberty perspective. LRN.FM show hosts aren't left, right, or conspiracy kooks. You can tune in 24-7 to LRN.FM via your phone, computer, satellite, and more. Listen free anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. So, Nima, what is anarcho-monarchism in a short paragraph? Sounds horrible. Well, Black and blue flag. Here's a paragraph from J.R.R. Tolkien, or Tolkien, I don't know how to pronounce it. All right. My political opinions lean more and more towards anarchy, philosophically understood, meaning the abolition of control, not whiskered uh, men with bombs, or to <laughs> unconstitutional monarchy. I would arrest anybody yeah. who uses the word state in any sense other than the inanimate real of England and its inhabitants, a thing that has neither power, rights, nor mind, and after a chance of recantation, execute them if they remained obstinate, exclamation well, point. If First we could of all, go back to personal names, it would do a lot of good. Government is an abstract noun, meaning the art and process of governing, and it should be an offense to write it with a capital G or okay, two. Sovereign citizen. Them. Must write your name when you can. <laughs> um, you know, interesting. My first thought is. Okay, first of all, it's pronounced token. Like the people who read his books, what they're doing 24 7 is token. <laughs> um, or, or like from South Park, token. Yeah, the token. token black. Yeah. Okay. So, secondly, what he's describing to me sounds like what the founders set up with the Constitution, you know, basically a government to protect you from government. And that didn't work out so well. No, no. But um, as Ben Stone says, you know, there wasn't really a lot of anarchist thought done a lot of work done in this oh it's great it's great so um so token was uh he was grasping for it but there wasn't you know he couldn't go read anatomy of the state you know all that (laughs) that thought hadn't been wasn't wasn't really written down in a readily accessible way as it is now Uh, but we're we're coming back soon so cool i'm thinking that we should like really take your wife up on that suggestion of like every episode describe the non-aggression principle and the gun to the head thing because i've been listening to some of her stuff and we've been getting comments and it's like people are like huh if they don't get it and we can't just hey we're back we can't just preach the choir all the time so 
What's the non-aggression principle and why is there a gun to your head enforcing every law and tax? Um, well, we should, you know what? We should have a bump for this, actually. <laughs> but go on. Be- because we're so anti-IP, I, um, Lou Rockwell actually did a speech about a month ago, and he's really good at putting it into plain terms. I'm going to go ahead and pick out a couple of paragraphs here to, um, to borrow from him that sort of explains what this is. He'll sue you. All right. Let's see. I'm kidding. Okay. Okay. The libertarian idea is based on a fundamental moral principle, non-aggression. No one may initiate physical force against anyone else. There is nothing antisocial about that. To the contrary, it is the denial of this principle that is antisocial, for it is peaceful interaction that lies at the heart of a civilized society. At first glance, hardly anyone can object to the non-aggression principle. Few people openly support acts of aggression against peaceful parties. But libertarians apply this principle across the board to all actors, public and private. Our view goes well beyond merely suggesting that the state may not engage in gross violations of the moral law. We contend that the state may not perform any action that would be forbidden to an individual. Moral norms either exist or they do not. Um, okay, am I so, correct? Yeah. Am I correct in I accidentally logged out cuz I was looking at a picture and it, you know, logged me out and I went back in. Is is does it really when you come in so it does. Okay, I thought they just typed this once, but when you join the chat room, it says how many days it's been since there's been a bow and arrow attack in Casper, Wyoming. <laughs> it sure that does. is Sorry about the distortion. That is friggin' yeah. funny whoever uh whatever yeah. of our 18 admins put that in there. That is often awesome. that is awesome. Right, I, we have to. Someone's gonna have to update it every day, and I'll let you know if there's. <laughs> um, uh, maybe they programmed it to where it updates automatically. Isn't uh, that the idea? Yeah, these guys are way smarter than us. <laughs> so there was a bow and arrow incident in Casper. Actually, it's been two days. So it's Friday. So today's Sunday. It's been two days. So yeah, ban okay. assault bows. Talk about this, Nima. And I'm just gonna. I mean, you should say. I, you could say I should talk about it because I'm here, but I'm still like. Oh man, well, it is so Wyoming. Let, let's, let's talk about it in terms of the non-aggression principle. Okay, since we did just define the non-aggression principle. Um, so, and I'm. Let's see. We should have the real name. So let me actually pull up the real story here. Yeah, it's National it's, News front page of Yahoo, and I knew it would be because it's so weird. You know, when's the last time you heard of like a school shooting at a college with bows and arrows and, and a murder and a suicide and a parent love triangle with a son? I guess it's just yeah, the bow and arrow thing that makes that makes it national it news, though. If it if, if it was with the gun, I guess it would have been national news. But well, maybe even not because it's not just a really. suicide. And you know, it's, really, it, I mean, there's like seven murders in Wyoming a year, and they're yeah. almost all people that know each other. I mean, there's yep. it's incredibly rare for any kind of like street violent crime here, and it's incredibly rare and weird for uh and anytime there's a home invasion here it's like somebody ripped somebody off in a drug deal and they're going back to get it so it's probably self-defense anyway so so (laughs) here's the basic facts uh according to what police are telling the press um guy named christopher crumb he's from connecticut uh his dad james crumb uh, was a computer science professor at casper college who lived with his uh girlfriend heidi arnold um the son chris Crum drove in from Connecticut, I think a couple weeks ago, um, and the the details are pretty vague on this. Is why there would be a conflict. Um, Love triangle with his yeah, dad, n- his not, dad's girlfriend. That's my guess. That's your guess. Okay, okay. I I don't see really anything as being confirmed as far as motive yet. Uh, maybe there is. I'm just not seeing it. But that those are the basic facts. So uh, Chris Crum apparently. Uh, Hacked his um, his dad's girlfriend, you know, his his possibly future stepmom, to death with a large knife uh, in the morning on a Friday morning. After he did that, he went down to Casper College, um, into his dad's classroom. His dad is James Crum, and shot his dad. His dad's in the a teacher, head. computer science yeah. teacher at Casper College, community computer college. science professor. Um, pulled out a, a compound bow. And uh, shot his dad with a, an arrow from that compound bow. Uh, apparently, this did not kill his dad immediately. So then, him and his dad had a struggle, and uh, the son, Christopher Crum, uh, then used the knife to finish off his dad, Professor James Crum. And, in the classroom, uh, he, like people in were in the classroom. People ran out after he shot his dad in the head, but uh, mm-hmm. people witnessed. Many people witnessed this, and you know, there's a lot of situations where people commit murder where. 
people go, if I had a gun, I would, and it's like, maybe a gun wouldn't have helped in some situations, but in this one, it absolutely would have classroom, small room, bow and arrow gun beats bow and arrow, man. Right. Come on. Right. And so, and so let's, let's look at this with through the non-aggression time. principle, right? So, so Chris Crum, the guy who shot his dad with a bow and arrow, knifed his dad and knifed his dad's girlfriend. Uh, all of those were acts of aggression. That's obvious. They were, they were, uh, he was violating the non-aggression principle. He was initiating aggression against his dad by shooting him with a bow and arrow. Um, his dad struggling with the son, right? So if dad would have instead actually come out on top and killed the son, um, in that fight, the dad would have not violated the non-aggression principle. The dad would have been using self-defense. He would have prevented uh, the full act of aggression that his son, Christopher Crumb, was trying to pull off. Um, so now, of course, uh, that didn't happen. The dad died. The, the son eventually killed himself. Um, and, of course, people are bringing up what can be done. What can the state do uh, to keep this kind of stuff from happening again? Now, first, I would say there's no way to prevent this stuff permanently or, or keep it from ever happening ever in the history of the world. Uh, libertarians, anarchists were not utopians, right? Uh, this kind of thing will happen from time to time. Murder, suicides, uh, here's what I think. Deaths. Here's what I think will be the response. There's a lot of response on the national, you know, on comments on national. And this is like really national news. It's, a, it's our little town. And they had to explain what Casper is and where it is. Yeah, which is why I, which is why I live here because uh, most people know what it is. Um, and there's a lot of like we need to have background checks for compound bows. First of all, it might have been his dad's. You know, I mean, who who comes from Connecticut or whatever and brings a compound bow here? It's kind of mm -hmm. like it's probably mm -hmm. his dad's. And secondly, I think the reaction here is going to be from lawmakers is going to be stealing more tax money for mental health services, which wouldn't help this guy because he's from out of town. So what I think they'll probably, they, they, the extrapolation of that would be, would be mental health checkpoints at the state border. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, but here's the thing uh, that would violate the non-aggression yeah. principle. I like, so, this. So, I like this. So anything the state did would violate the non-aggression principle. Uh, here's why. So say the state decides to, like you said, set up um Oh, I thought I heard the bump music. Say the state decides to set up checkpoints, right? All around the state. Um, mental health checkpoints, all right? <laughs> so, um, first of all, the first reason why it violates the non-aggression principle is where will they get that money? Now, if they had some kind of donation fund and had a drive to do this, maybe that wouldn't that that first step. Then it would be have aggression. to be voluntary, like you know the right. heart rate testing they have at the county fair. Right. Right, right, but but they won't, right? So if the government ends up doing something like this, they will indeed get that, uh, or most likely get that from tax money. That tax money was gotten through aggression, right? When you pay your taxes, you can't choose to not pay them. You can't simply, you can, well, I guess I suppose you can choose to not pay them, but eventually the state will use its force, use its aggression to extract that from you. So that's the first act of aggression, <laughs> is the state steals that money in order to set this up. Somebody said they'll have to remove all rocks from Wyoming too, and I'm like, you ever been here? That's pretty much what the state consists yeah, of. Yeah, that that would be rocks and sagebrush. <laughs> you would, have, brush, you would no man. longer have this a place. Wyoming. Looks like the moon with sagebrush. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you look at the it, picture I posted on the uh, you know the girl on the calendar, the background there is Wyoming, right? Right. You made it, Nima. You mm -hmm. didn't build that. Yeah. No. <laughs> Wyoming built that. You built uh, that out of other the, things. The planet built that. I know. Hey, you know that that's a good idea. Okay, so so Obama says you didn't build that, the government did. Well, he's wrong. The the planet built everything on it in the first place. Actually, he's right if he's talking about General so. Electric. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lot of corporations, um, but I like what we're doing here, but I only want to do this once per episode because I don't want the whole thing to become a didactical kindergarten of liberty because most of our <laughs> listeners are the right. choir, but we don't want to just preach to the choir. So at least once an episode, let's try to take a little bit to break Good. things down and it's been two days since a bow and arrow attack in Casper so if some admin wants to update that that'd be good <laughs> I'd love it if you could uh, that's really evil and funny man that is funny alright worms we'll, we'll be back and Wyoming from Wyoming since time began tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties now there's a movie that aims back the government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. 
Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. You want to record everything. No, because the, the episode starts with me screaming at you, and I never really made an apt apology. Uh, so people will go, man, Michael screamed at Nima. And like, so let me fake my apology again now for the microphone. Nima, I'm really sorry I was so mean to you. That's okay, man. I accept your apology. I'm sorry I was three minutes late. Okay. I really didn't Bitcoin. think I was, though. I was looking at the wrong clock. <laughs> Record Fox. all the things. Like Record that. all the things. And the real freedom. Yeah. That is so square. Oh, it's, uh, it's our check ad. out the additional That's freedom. Pretty. That's pretty funny. That, that, that comic, maybe people in chat room know this since they probably use the internet. Inter all the things. A yeah, what's that from? Well, well, all the things is from a comic called Hyperbole and a Half, which is and really it's funny. And it's like a really badly comic. drawn, like round-faced yeah. man saying it, right? Yeah. I've seen that, yeah. Yeah. I was wondering... Um, did that come post the Oatmeal, which is also an awesome web comic? Uh, was it because it, it feels kind of like similar in style? I think he that. uses that too. All the things. Does he? Does yeah. He? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I guess the difference being that the Oatmeal still posts regularly and makes quality content, whereas and, the and Hyperbole and a Half Girl has like stopped. Yeah. She's and, blog and faded. The, and the Oatmeal <laughs> blog faded. And the Oatmeal is probably like making six figures doing what he's doing. Oh, funny, Richard G. He thought your fake uh, pro-government commercial is real. Well, I guess maybe it's really? the first time you heard it. Awesome. Yeah. Good ad making, Michael. Yep. Uh, no, that's yep. a fake ad that Mike... Oh, I guess he's listening to LRN, not us. Oh, what commercial were you hearing? I don't know what he was hearing. It was it was the one that starts off with um, America the Beautiful on strings and horns. Oh, yeah. Then, well, and, I'm thinking like... like I'm, th blah, 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 I'm blah. thinking, wait, we have the same commercials that they have because we're rebroadcasting them. But you know what doesn't but he have said, the same he commercials? He says on LRN, so... You know what does not have the same commercials is what? Free Talk Live listening over the internet over LRN and Free Talk Live listening over the radio out in the world. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, because they play like our commercials... Uh, 20 you know a lot on free talk live and they do I think not we're be play live them. again soon they do not play them when they're on xm satellite radio because the they can sell that LRN that's worth money here, FM. here we come here we come ha! here's the fiends and we're worms. live again worms. worms all right okay so should we give the call in number again no. yes no, no. give the call in number all right call this in number is the central scrutinizer no well, there's two then because there's one in the chat room <laughs> He's which fake. one is which? He's oh, fake. you're the real one. All right. No, he just so, broke into the show, man. That wasn't me. <laughs> the Fiends live call in number is 307 215 5171. Or um or friend the the Skype account. What's the Skype account? Kitty Feet One? Kitty Feet One. K I T T Y F E E T One. Yeah. Uh, you know who I, I feel like we didn't really finish our conversation with who I'd like to talk more to? Uh, Saeed, our caller from Iran, who called in last episode. Man, you're going to get us droned. He's calling from why? Iran. We got people oh. torrenting from Saudi Arabia. Well, did you see the new... Uh, you got a funny the, last name and a beard. Do you have the a beard these days? Uh, oh, of course. When have I not okay. had a beard? <laughs> we should start a religion in a wooden church. Yeah, yeah. Less than a million um, members. The the sen the Senate unanimously voted on more Iran sanctions. Uh, although it looks like six people abstained, I I hope one of those was Rand Paul, but I doubt it since he's bad on that. <clears throat> um, and and they and they put it in the NDAA. So I guess the NDAA has become a dumping point for like all the really 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 bad things. Um, Destroy but dump the bad things here in this memory <laughs> hole in the, in the, the anti memory NDAA. hole. The, the the thing that no mainstream reporter will ever report on ever, uh, or they'll so, get arrested for irritating the government. Yeah, irritating. Right. Is that the charge in that case? Irritating the Air Force Colonel? No, that was the threshold. That, that was the threshold for deciding if the if you can arrest the protesters or not. He was, was if at, you feel personally was, irritated by them. And wasn't that at Burbelson Air Force Air Force Base? <laughs> uh, it was actually Hancock. 
national that air bothers guard base. me you're going to jail well they also uh, legislate all the things i like that i mean they also <laughs> made a, passed a law in arizona that makes it Ill- illegal to annoy someone on the internet and i'm like oh yeah what right. is the internet for Except annoying, and you know, is, and my is not for annoy. Then why well, is interwebs? He, and then you know, sheriff. Uh, what's the bad sheriff there? Uh, Arpaio. He annoys me, and he's in Arizona. Can I have him arrested? He talks on the internet, and it annoys me. <laughs> of course, that's the that's the main point, right? They're immune from their silly little edicts. They, as long as they're part of the state, they can do whatever the hell they want until somebody else in the state doesn't like them. Um, yeah, I but, gotta go wash but, the spilled nicotine off my hands. Keep talking. Okay, do that. Uh, I was going to continue a little bit on this sanctions thing um, because it on its face shows that it is nothing more than an act of war to hurt the Iranian people themselves and has nothing to do with any kind of true, um, I guess, preventing nuclear weapons thing, although that's just the excuse. Um, in, in a story... Um, let's see. Who is the main person here? Okay. Well, uh, according to Jim Loeb from antiwar.com, I'm not getting the original source here, but uh, according to Jim Loeb, uh, Democratic Senator Robert Menendez, one of the amendments co-sponsors to increase the sanctions on Iran, which are already starving people and people are dying from them and the currency is being devalued by uh, giant orders of magnitude. Um, he says... Democratic Senator Robert Menendez. Yes, our current sanctions are having a demonstrable effect on the Iranian economy, but Iran is still working just as hard to develop nuclear weapons. Stop. Uh, he's right on that because Iran, Iran is not working to develop nuclear weapons. So yes, they are working just as hard as when they were not working at all as they are now, which is also not working at all. Uh, continue. Um, Menendez continues, that's why it is imperative for us to adapt our policies to tighten the economic noose. Look at that terminology. These people literally uh, use the terminology of a noose. Yeah. A noose. How much more can they tighten it? I mean, it's kind of like they're completely sanctioned, but then they keep coming out and saying, we're going to have to sanction them harder. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, man, but it It only punishes the people. It doesn't punish the government punishes the people and it also punishes um businesses that would seek to get the benefits of trading with iran for instance um there's a specific thing in there that penalizes nations and businesses for using precious metals to trade with uh anybody in iran uh and they're going they're going after turkey there who um used i think gold and maybe silver to buy tons and tons of of oil and petrochemicals from iran uh earlier the year i think uh so there's specifically targeting anybody who would do any kind of trade at all uh and, and especially <laughs> you know what, with uh with precious metals you know it's really funny about that i mean really it's it's not surprising that they punish the citizens of a country to try to get at the government and, and i mean that's what the happens term, the noose they're, 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 they're little, it's it's the new lynch mob sanctions yeah. are nothing more than the new lynch mob. yeah we got it we got it so uh moving along before i lose my train of thought you just really like the nooses. Do you have a thing about nooses? Do you do don't you like, like the nooses? It's just. Um, do you enjoy you know. them in your play? <laughs> when the wife's gone, do you go? Mm, time for some autoerotic. So anyway, uh, I mean, all wars are about destroying the citizens to piss off the government. I mean, mm. you know, yeah, they bombed countries, bombed Germany. You know, like Germany's, uh, you know, air bomb factories during World War II, but they also just bombed the shit out of Germany. Yeah. And the thing is, like. What is that supposed to do? Do governments care about their citizens? And, you know, I guess in some countries they could protest, but like, do you really think if they tighten the sanctions enough in Iran or China, they're going to go this? Oh, the citizens are upset. No, they're not going to know they're upset because it's illegal. And they're getting that way here, too. I I, I guess if you follow Molyneux's theory of uh, we're all tax livestock on our state government master's farms, then it would be, you know, killing your neighbor's cattle. So that he can't extract the resources out of those cattle that he would have been able to before. Every citizen in America, except the government employees, could be wiped out by a foreign nation and and our government. And our government could still profit from it. They could still take everything that's left and sell it and, you know, retire on their own farms. Uh, ranches. They could, but, uh, but eventually they would Air die, Force right? Bases. I mean, it, they're, they're parasites. So if the whole body politic i guess no, I mean, the whole body about- was destroyed uh the fleet the fleet could go find another body but eventually well think about the think think about the the punchline at the end of uh of um dr strangelove and i i don't know is it too soon can i give a spoiler for that movie dude that movie's it's like a million years old it's 48 it's the same age as me it's 48 years old okay so uh thanks so <laughs> is um 
you know, I mean, basically at the end of that, Dr. Strangelove, the former Nazi scientist who's, you know, the nuclear advisor to the president, stands mm-hmm. up and he's basically like, well, I mean, 10, 90%, we could take 10 million people and put them in underground mine shafts and repopulate the earth. We need women 10 to 1 in a ratio of men. And, and he, like, <laughs> he gets so turned on by the idea of that that he stands up from his wheelchair and he hasn't been able to walk for decades. So, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah. So yeah, maybe, uh, maybe. they could. I mean, the earth could be destroyed and they could just you know, live down there having their sex slaves and all the gold and all the weapons and all the things, all the things and live a pretty good life and just come out and, uh, you know, let the military run, re rebuild the earth in its own image. Yeah. I suppose they might think that, I don't know how true it would be in practice if they would actually be successful at something like that. But, uh, I think the scarier thing is it feels like they probably do think that way. Uh, at least, at least that's you how, think it Dick Cheney how they did, act. You think Dick Cheney doesn't have an underground bunker that's more comfortable than all of our homes of everyone listening can buy? Oh, I'm, I'm sure he does, but I think they miscalculate. I think if they actually did destroy the whole population of the world, uh, I don't think that they would maintain their hegemony the way they think they would in the post-apocalypse. I really don't. <clears throat> I, I hmm. think I think I think it'd like be starting from zero. I think what, they'd only what, allow what, compliant people to go down in the holes, though. Well, but what reason would the military have to keep following the orders of these civilian leaders in a post-apocalyptic world? The military would be the only ones with the power. Yeah, but they'd pick the military members who are the most compliant to go down with them, because they'd literally be able to choose who goes down. We'll continue on this thought experiment in just a few. If you're looking for work, it- did your world collapse when Ron Paul didn't win? Don't keep hoping for some great man to fix government through government. Complete your evolution today to full-on anarcho-capitalist. Reward your brain with the freedom beans and quit breaking your heart with some politician. While the libertarians argue, But who would build the roads? The freedom beans have already built the roads and moved on to making the great media content of the libertarian paradise. Freedomfiends.com. That's freedomfiends.com. The government probably does produce 60 pages of legislation per hour. Yeah, yeah. Well, at least at least lobbyists and think tanks do, and those can eventually become part of the government. That's so square, man. So freaking square. Sound quality is really bad at the listen now link. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Mm. What's up, Nima? S- Oh, not much. Not much. Um, so should we keep talking about what would happen if, uh, if the government did kill everybody yes. and retreated to their Dick Cheney bunkers in the mountains underground? Yeah. Which, you know, I mean, if, if they keep adding uh, sanctions, I mean, where do you stop at sanctions and there's nothing left to sanction and they, then they just start bombing and then, yeah. uh, you know. They basically well, talk like if they bomb Iran, it's going to start World War Three. but they also say we have to bomb Iran, so... Yeah, yeah. Well, here's what I worry. I worry that that politicians probably follow that line of thought that hey, you know, we could lose ninety percent of the world's population, we'd be fine in our well. That's actually a line. You know, there's a line in uh, in Doctor Strangelove that's a line in a Dead Kennedy song, right. more or less paraphrase. It's what's ten million dead if it's keeping out the Russians. Mm-hmm. Although the they they were talking about like ten million or less left after in the whole world with what they were doing. Ah, uh, ah, uh, yeah, yeah. But I, I think they would be wrong in that, and I guess nobody can really predict the future, but we can engage in these little thought experiments. And I think the reason, even if they chose Yo. the most obedient people to go down into the bunkers with them, um, obedient people are only obedient until the master stops feeding them, right? And, and the only way the government can feed their obedient slaves is if they have productive slaves to steal from in the first place. And they'd have to kill most of the children because uh, most, I don't know about most, but a certain number, percentage of people are born just not wanting to be told what to do. And most of them listen to the Freedom Fiends. <laughs> right. So they'd have to kill all our fans. Yeah. Um, and, and, then, and then it seems like the only... The only way to keep getting resources, it, it'd be some, they'd, I'd imagine they'd set up some kind of military um, uh, that would end up being able to keep people in line and go out into the world and, and I guess, fight with other post-apocalyptic bands for <laughs> whatever resources were left. Um, plus, it would be if, 
it, it seems like it would have to all be centrally planned, right? Like they'd, they'd have all these maybe underground labs where they grew food. Um, they would centrally plan the needs of the food and it would fail. There wouldn't be a price system. I feel like they would have this, this horrible Sovietized underground, uh, which, which be, would be ironic because it would literally be underground, but it wouldn't be an underground economy. It would be centrally planned. And I think it would fail, uh, quickly. Well, uh, that's kind of how what happened in Demolition Man, if we want to take more examples from fiction. Great movie, great movie. And my face is in it for about three seconds. Uh, <laughs> Demolition Man, I mean, basically, there is a perfect plan society where children are bred in test tubes. And, you know, the what happens with the ones that aren't compliant is they literally go underground. They go live in the sewers because they don't want to be told what to do. And they'd rather live a rough life and not mm-hmm. be anyone's master and be down right. in the sewer eating rat burgers or carne de rato uh, than uh, up being compliant little 40-year-old virgins whispering, I wish I were an Oscar Mayer wiener. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I, I guess my point is is you can't – the government can never achieve that utopia that they wish they could because of – of economic laws, you know, w- when they try to plan things to that level of detail, there's no price system and the society will collapse. I mean, that's basically what the Soviet Union was trying to do: was create uh, that demolition man scenario, uh, and they couldn't. And I don't think anybody can. I think it's a natural law that you can't, um, you can't get rid of of freedom. You can't get rid of any uh, rel- remnants of the market and have any level of prosperity or uh, modern technology or sunshine farts. Uh, you also couldn't have the demolition man pussy ass society without cops who were not pussy. The cops in there were really, really pussy. You need a thuggish uh, RoboCop kind of force like we're headed toward now to have that kind of compliant mm-hmm. society. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I, yeah, which, which I, I think I mean, was I'm another actually, flaw in the demolition man scenario. I mean, but, is, but are we actually saying like, you know, I have some problems with suspension of disbelief with the movie Demolition Man. <laughs> No, I think I think we're continuing on the thought experiment and saying why. I'm um, kidding, man. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Hmm. But uh, but yeah, I mean, in, in Demolition Man, so the the underground people who who decided to go escape the government, those people were tough, right? I mean, they they struggled and scraped for a living all the time. They were probably pretty strong and resilient. Uh, if there were any kind of conflict, it seems like they would be able to dispatch with the the cops in the the sunshiny Demolition Man world. Uh, rather quickly yeah game staging is a bitch yeah <coughs> we're uh we're still sort of beta testing doing this live streaming thing on our server uh i don't know how we're going to figure it out by thursday but maybe um, we are well we need to set aside a day to actually just do tests i mean we did 10 minutes before the show but uh we should do like you know one of those things where we sit down and test things for half an hour. Uh, yes, and good. work on gain staging, which is yeah. a term I know, but I had to look it up, and it went to the Alesis website, and they make the mixer I'm using. So maybe, uh, yeah, <laughs> they can help gain stage. Uh, seven minutes. I was late. Yes, Mr. Abstracto, seven minutes. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's something, but I think it's something other than just gain levels because I can adjust that on the fly, and I did. I mean, let me turn it down a little bit more. Let me turn it down to... Uh, here okay now how is it now uh hit refresh and then you may have to turn up but we're probably not going to be too loud it might be too quiet if anything but let's check it are out you, are, are you turning down the master on the butt the yeah. butt master yeah okay good yeah it's turned down, down. the butt master down wow. the butt master yeah yes up the turn down all right. the things okay okay worms to your moms all right <laughs> So, um, are we going to finish out the segment with testing, or do you have something no. else? Well, we can test while talking. Just go ahead and talk. You got some stuff? Okay. I got some stuff. I, I got a couple corrections from last uh, episode. Um, All right. I said malum prohibita, and then I said, I thought it was mala. And it's like, malum is singular, and mala is plural. For malum prohibita, mala prohibita, malum in se, mala in se. Mm. And uh, mm. the, no- the noises that I thought were... Someone climbing over my fence, and I was running around with a gun. Uh, it happened again. I went out there. It was squirrels. <laughs> really loud Those squirrels. Those damn squirrels. Do you still love them as much as you do? As as much as you did? Yeah. Does that does that I'm decrease just, your love of squirrels? I'm very I'm very tickled by them. So they're saying we sound good now. 
Yeah, oh, I think okay. we fixed so, it. I think I just had it at like ten decibels when it should have been at seven or five or two. Your or butt something. was your butt yeah. was too high up. Squirrel, it was the wrong angle. This is the squirrel scru- scrutinizer. <laughs> <laughs> that, that should be my name on here, squirrel scrutinizer. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Um. Hmm. So, where do you want to go from here? Um. Well, we did our segment where we read submissions. Um, I do want to talk and about coffee. a couple th- other things we've done. I did a an interview on this guy's show, The Freedom Experiment. This uh, urban k- kid from Chicago. Okay, he's a black guy from Chicago who sounds That's like racist. sounds like he voted for Obama, but he's an anarcho capitalist. I love it. I love that. Uh, I did a an interview on him. It's on the gumbo also, and it's mm-hmm. it's it's kind of. I'm not as good without you, Nima. I really are not. But it's a good intro to liberty. If anybody wants to go hear something like we, that, we have we have an amazing synergy. That's why we're the fiends. But uh, I'm going to hopefully do an interview with this guy. We did. We've been back and forth, and I think we're tracking it for uh, next weekend. So, and I think we will uh, double release that also on our end as a gumbo. Who is um, it? The same guy, the the Rodney. What's his name? Oh, okay. It'll come out a week after that because the gumbo next week is going to be wow. the Mojo Nixon interview, which was okay. pre-released a week early on our RSS torrent for, for feed. Torrenters, be- yes. torrent only. It was, it was straight to torrent, straight to BitTorrent release, which is what they have now. You know, it's be straight to video meant low budget. Now it's straight to BitTorrent. <laughs> you, can, you don't even afford. You can't even afford video. Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah, check that out. And that's one of the advantages of being one of our fiends, torrenters, and cedars is that you're going to get episodes a week early, two weeks early sometimes with the gumbo and a day early all the time with the fiends. So we're going to start doing our, our Tuesday show on Monday, releasing on torrent Monday night, and then it'll come out Tuesday on the podcast. And, and you have a, a huge ambition and drive to get this torrent thing um, bigger and bigger Worldwide. and keep growing yeah. it. And, um, and I'm kind of, I, I don't want to say you're dragging me along because I kind of get it, but, um, why don't you explain uh, uh, to a little to us a little bit more uh, the reasoning behind it? And we'll, yeah. we'll come back with that okay. uh, after we sell some things here. Yep. When we're in the FEMA camps, you'll get it. <laughs> Although you won't, because you won't know. Worms. The NEMA Worms. camps. The NEMA camps. NEMA camps. Worms. Love the fiends and want to help out? We do take donations and we put them back into our Liberty Projects. You can make a donation by clicking on the spinning coin on any post. But what if you want to help but you ain't got no cash? Or you made a donation and you want to help more? Here's how you can help. Download and seed our torrents to help keep us drone-proof. There's a torrent club link at the top of freedomfiends.com. You can also blog the fiends and share episode links on Facebook, Twitter, and elsewhere. You can rate and review our movies on Amazon. Amazon and IMDb, you can rate and review the Freedom Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo and our songs on iTunes. That really helps a lot. You can buy our movies and share them with friends or give them out as gifts. And one of the best ways to spread liberty is to buy a bunch of Freedom Fiends buttons and give them out as gifts. Wholesale prices are available, and you can also comment on our site or better yet, comment about us on other sites. And please email the site link to all your friends. Thanks for helping spread the Fiends message worldwide to as many Liberty people as you can, especially to those who don't yet get it. You rock. I got the claim claim on that Jankum. I got the claim on that Jankum. You stay away from my Jankum Jankum claim. (laughs) All right. Speaking of disgusting things, my wife, um, sometimes she hears things I say. Like, she won't, she's not listening to the show live, but she'll, like, walk by and I went out there to talk to her. She's going to dinner or something. Um, and she was like, "Who did you tell to eat poop and swallow the whole thing down?" I was kind of that was the most disgusting thing I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, I, my like, wife, I don't know, but, but I'm sure it was funny in the moment. I the don't same thing. What it the was, same thing's going on in my home. I got headphones on, and DJs sometimes in the room, sometimes in the next room, and she'll just chime in on something or be like, "What are you talking about?" Yeah, but uh, yeah. you know, speaking That's of disgusting, fiends. speaking Stay of dis- speaking of disgusting things, that cop who gave the boots to the bum made the talk show rounds and was a star for a day. And the New York Police Commission gave him some like hero cufflinks. And uh, he his first comment was, you know, I really didn't think about the money that those boots cost. And I'm thinking, yeah, it's <laughs> stolen. 
I really yeah, think the police yeah. commission because you make like, so much of it. I really idiot. think the, the police union made that whole thing up, or it's possible they did. And they even had an interview with the tourist lady from Arizona who supposedly took the picture of it and sent it, tweeted it, and it went viral. Mm-hmm. I really think even if it didn't, if if it wasn't manufactured, it still was because of the puppy parade nature of the media. And because of the way the that. media handled yeah. it. Oh, t- to- totally. Yeah, because a news director hears that and their ears perk up and they go, oh, that's an amazing story. But if, if I was at a news meeting and I pitched, um, oh, um, you know, my friend and his wife are going to go around giving coffee to homeless people uh, at night when it's cold. She'd be like, eh, that kind of stuff happens all the time. You know what they um, said on Fox that really makes me think this thing was planned? I saw on Fox News, one of the bobbleheaded blondes uh, said, you know, they showed the story and then she said, and isn't that turned to her co-host and said, now, isn't that great? I mean, doesn't that just undo in your mind all those videos you see of the very few police out there who are bad? Uh-huh. uh-huh. Uh, that's, that's the script, the man. That's the script. Yep. Like yep. the that's police totally commission the said, the police commission said, what can we do about this guy, Pete Ayer and his friends? You know, <laughs> we and I'd cr- love to see some good reporting on it. I haven't really seen any, anybody really investigate it yet. Um, I guess maybe I shouldn't be complaining about that. Maybe I should get off my ass and make some calls, but I haven't yet. It'd be great if somebody who does that full time and has the time, uh, yeah. try to figure out where the hell, uh, what, what happened here? You know, was there some kind of plan? Was the police union I involved? I think it'd be like on Treme where, you know, and this is based on a true thing where, uh, an investigator and an attorney like went out to expose these cops who murdered some people after Katrina, and uh they finally exposed it and like one cop lost his job nobody got investigated and the story was dead a week later yeah after making mm-hmm. national news you know yep 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 and that's well, not the people who shot the people in the danzinger bridge this is a completely different thing of like some some random like one guy shooting somebody kind of thing yeah yeah well i, I mean i guess the thing too is is it that amazing of a charitable action i feel like uh Everyday private citizens, every day stuff happens. It's much more charitable than that. Like well, I said, somebody me and my said, wife used to just randomly, sometimes when it was cold at night, my wife would be like, let's go buy coffee and give it to all the homeless people. Or let's go yeah. buy food and distribute yeah. it to all the homeless people. And we would. Uh, and, and randomly we'd come across people who needed help and we'd help them. And I think that that's, I'm not trying to say great for me. I'm trying to say people in general have done that uh, throughout history all the time. And they, and they don't get to be on Sunday talk shows. And somebody said it really well. And I'll just say this and then move on uh, because I got one more thing I want to cover is if this wasn't manufactured, a cop didn't buy boots. A guy bought boots. You know, cops don't cops job is infringing on rights and hurting people. Ah, mm -hmm, You know, mm -hmm. it was a man who happened to be a cop on duty. It wasn't a cop who did this. And I guess that would be my answer to people who say I'm I'm way too negative about this, which is what my wife said. She she was really upset by how angry I was at, at this whole puppy parade. And she was like, "Why can't you just ever see the good in the world?" You know, the homeless really, guy. My wife got, was got like, boots. "My wife was like, what a load of horse shit they're trying to feed us on the TV." Oh my god! But, well, if you're watching it on TV, I I could see how you would definitely. Oh no! See like that much I told her clearly, about but, it. No, it was it was I was um. My wife is more uh. A, an old curmudgeon-y negative anarchist like me <laughs> than your wife. Your wife still got some like, oh, people are good left in her, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. And, and they're, they're, it's true, though. There might have been – we don't know. We weren't there. There might have been a moment of genuine charity in the cop's heart. And maybe he doesn't know any better, and, and you can't really ever know what goes on in somebody's mind. So maybe he did have the purest <laughs> of intentions in his heart. Maybe he doesn't get that, that his paycheck is aggression. Maybe he doesn't get that. <laughs> and, and so maybe there was – in, in a very closed system, uh, if you don't look at the unseen, uh, <laughs> there there was maybe some good action in that. But if you look just, at the whole picture, I don't think there really is. I just muted the mic and said, DJ, was that okay or did I paint you in a way that – I mean, do I need – I mean, that – you know, because I kind of got, got it out really quickly and didn't explain it. And she's like, I'm happy to be to be portrayed as a curmudgeonly old anarchist. <laughs> okay yeah, last yeah. last story here mom wants dead son's college loans forgiven did you read this one ah uh, no but a, that's that's a really uh interesting issue though isn't well, it Cause, yeah. was it a parent loan yeah there are some loans loan. that are called the, the <clears throat> it was a student loan plus go, go well, let me tell you what it was we got about yeah, 10 seconds left let me just tell you what it was okay. it was a, a student loan mother co-signed for it says in the contract uh-huh. no matter what happens you're responsible for this loan and uh-huh. now she's saying, I want it forgiven. 
Um, and there's a petition with 200,000 people saying, forgive this petition. Now, the federal part of it is for, was forgiven, but there's a private part of it. It's $10,000. You know, so the government stole a bunch of money to pay for most of it. And there's $10,000 she still owes. There's 200,000 people like calling for the insurance company's head on a pike for still asking her for the money. And I really like this one comment. It said, if the 200,000 people who signed this petition had each given her five cents instead of their signature, her loan would have been paid off. <laughs> it's an interesting point. Um, no, but they want, they want someone else to do it. And basically, if this was the policy, like loaning would collapse. It can't work that way. You know, you can't say, oh, we feel sorry for you. We're going to take care of this, you know then everybody would want it. It wouldn't, you know, be, they say this is unfair. That wouldn't mm -hmm. be unfair. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be unfair to the people that have to pay their loans off. Yeah. It's not again, how it works. Again, though, uh, I mean, we're talking about a system that is so mutated. We don't really know what it would look like if market forces were unhindered, if, if it was just the market taking care of education and financing of higher education. Yeah. It, it, would, it would resemble in no way, shape, or form how it currently looks. But I still really like the comment of it if these indignant 200,000 people had given her five cents each, which anybody in the world could afford. Anybody who has a computer that can get online and complain – can mm -hmm. get five can mm -hmm. donate five cents yeah. yeah and instead they're like no someone else should do it i didn't do that <laughs> i think the moral of the story yeah. here is yeah, maybe you know, that's really the root of the problem the moral yeah. of the story is don't go to college <laughs> that's kind of a overly broad moral but I, I get what you're getting at there go to khan uh, academy yeah, go to khan academy learn your own but uh, you i know, mean the, really the, 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 sad, if, the sad thing is there's so many industries out there that are so heavily uh, regulated and influenced by state action that in some professions you need to go spend years and years in school and accumulate uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt uh, just to get approved by uh, state or state influenced organizations in order but to But you do know, most people do. don't go to college for that kind of things. Most people yeah. go to college and get a liberal arts education, which you can get on Khan Academy better, yeah. free. While smoking a bowl in your underwear while your cat licks, you know, cream off your toes, which is <laughs> how I study things. <coughs> I don't smoke bowls wow. and I don't let my cat, I don't encourage my cats to lick my toes. I don't <laughs> help them. They occasionally do, but. They, they do it anyway. Wow. wow. Yeah. Sounds like a, a ton of fun. More fun than a barrel it really full is. of. Hookers. Uh, cream cream licking kittens. That was a line hookers. in my band Bomb had a song, Life's More Fun in a Barrel Full of Strippers. Nice, nice. Uh, why strippers and not hookers? Which is more fun? I think hookers are probably a lot more fun, huh? Because I've never paid money for sex and I was dating a lot of strippers back then. A couple of them were hookers, uh, but they I didn't pay. They bought me stuff. Uh, uh, they paid uh, me. Hookers pay me. Yep, yep. I like how I don't have to ask my wife, does that offend you? Like a lot of wives would be like, what are you talking about? But the thing I'm really worried about is, do you mind that I called you a curmudgeonly old anarchist? And she's like, <laughs> no, that's, I'm fine with that. Nice, nice. Yeah. Oh, so it's been a pretty good fiends today. It I really think, has. Um, we, we tested some things, so hopefully by Thursday we'll have it uh, flawless and it'll sound good to people. It won't jitter, it won't stutter, and uh, you'll get to hear the Fiends live from the Listen Now link on freedomfiends.com. And, um, and we'll just bypass that whole Curry clusterfuck completely. Yep, that <laughs> Curry cluster. Although we like Adam Curry. He uh, invented yeah, podcasting. Yeah. Without him, we'd be screaming at people on the street corner. <laughs> yeah and there's really no hard feelings and we're not angry it's just it didn't work for us and we're gonna try something Technical. new and i think it, it could end up being you know a really good thing for us to have people listening to our stream and to pimp yeah. our stream and and we have a lot more control and you know the fiends we're kind of our own thing anyway so yeah. i think it, it it should bode well and uh and and thank you so much for everybody in the chat room we're so glad there were so many people and thanks so much for helping us out we love y'all yep Yep. Worms. Thank you, Nima Vidati. Thank you, Michael Dean. W. Dean. <laughs> ah, back so, on the Worm Island. So I started recording. We're uh, still butt casting here because I want to show people how the post game 
show works. Okay, so okay. my check for this month from the Koch brothers was a little short. <laughs> it was only seventeen thousand dollars. They usually, I mean, I think we get nineteen thousand five hundred or something. God, was, I wish was you were joking. Sh- was your short? <laughs> I would take yes, their mine, money. Mine I would was take zero. the Koch brothers' money if we didn't have to do, do anything I, at I, all. I don't think they would give it to. Us. I don't think so either. They wouldn't touch it's, us it's with a ten-foot um, dick. My uh, <laughs> nice. root worms, fish, and hog. My um, no, my mother-in-law's my mother-in-law's uh boyfriend, his son. I know this is kind of a weird family thing to follow, but uh, a, a tangential family familial relationship to me. We uh, we took this long road trip. He went with us camping in West Texas, and I was talking to him about the fiends and what we do. And he's like, "Well, you could get you could just get uh, the Koch brothers to finance you." And I was like, "I don't think they would want anything Mm-mm. to do with us." But I do want to get on Sirius Satellite Radio, and I think it's possible. I really do. I mean, if yeah. if yeah. if there can be a something cocksucker show with root boy slim or no with uh mojo nixon on there it's we could be on there and he cusses like a fucking he said he said i thought i was like i thought you can cuss on there and he's like oh no you know i mean they have the patsy klein pussy ass country show where you can't cuss but you know if you want that they have that but if you want the johnny cash all pilled up fucking someone in the ass country show that's my show Mm-hmm. <laughs> nice, nice. Lying that's cocksuckers. Be- yeah. I mean, that's the beauty of a system where you have to, you know, pay for service rather than it being in the commons like the airwaves were. Because the FCC can regulate that. They'd I love guess they to do regulate serious- that. Well, they but, do um, have monopolies. I mean, they basically have a monopoly. There were there was XM and there was Sirius, and they combined them, and now there's pretty much a monopoly. Like. I mean, I guess we could start a satellite show. I mean, we could rent satellite time, but uh, that is it's so not gonna, expensive, dude. It's, and it's not going to work with anything in anybody's car. You know, yeah, it's going to have yeah. to go over the internet at some point. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Well, um, thoughts to ponder. And um, <clears throat> again, I, I just would like to thank everybody who's still listening. And um, any other post games for reals, though? Um, you know, something I was thinking of. There's, there's a thing that I want to do as a cast uh, topic is cousin marriage. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was kind of interested. That. I'll send you a few links from Wikipedia. Um, cousin marriage account. First cousin marriage accounts for 10% of all marriages on earth mm-hmm. right now. Um, it's pretty popular in the Middle East, which is probably mm-hmm. something a lot of Islamophobes would say. Yeah, see, they're all yeah. inbred, not like me. But uh, <laughs> it's, it's actually it's interesting to me because first first of all, there's never been anybody I'm ever related to who's the least bit attractive to me, and if there were, I would I would say it in a second. But all my family's like, Ugh. especially my cousins. <laughs> but um, the actually the stuff about like birth defects from cousin marriage and stuff is vastly over over stressed yep. and not very yep. real and actually yep. cousin that. marriages tend to have like far less abuse and far less divorce and uh a lot of prominent people have married their cousins uh including einstein and the really interesting one to me was darwin huh. <laughs> that is really interesting yeah okay okay yeah and um, um yeah put it in the notes and i'll, I'll it's just kind of it's we'll, you know we'll the, it's up. interesting to me because it's like it's a taboo of who can marry who and most yeah. states ban it although new york state and california it's legal to marry your cousin <laughs> wyoming it's specifically illegal Really, and in, in, in Utah, it's county by county. <laughs> huh, huh. Which is a, a great explanation. States' rights, of, motherfucker. Uh, well, it's it's why give the state uh, power over that realm in general is, yeah. I think, what it points to. It, the state will always do something you don't want it to do whenever you give it access to any sphere of of life. Yep. You okay, DJ? Oh, the wind. Maybe you shouldn't be by that one window. That's the one that cracks from the wind. Yeah, the wind is insane right now. It's like 65 mile an hour gusts. Um, yeah, the bad parts of Texas weather are omnipresent the past few days too. And by that I mean the humidity. Even though it's like November, it's like I sweat my butt off when I'm at work. Literally, I have like sweat pouring down me just because it's so humid yeah. and muggy. Awful. Yeah. And yet, it, and yet, it won't rain. Apparently, we did not get an, one drop of rain all of November, and that's like a first in 115 years in Austin. Yeah, it's uh, like unseasonably warm here too. It's like 60 degrees it? here today. You know, another thing about the wind too is, if I was still using a condenser mic, it'd be picking it up, ah, which wouldn't yeah, be good because yeah, I can yeah. hear it fairly loud in my room. I'm in front of the window, and it's like, well, uh, oh, that brings me to another post game question. Um, my wife apologized for using the bathroom and flushing. 
Did you hear that? Did you hear? I didn't hear clutch? it. Uh, was it during a break? Because I left for some breaks. I don't know. I don't know when it was. No. I, I I can never hear no, those man. things. I, I think, wear the gun ears. I think it's because you're using uh, a dynamic the, mic. The dynamic mic. It's, and they're that's pretty what, That's why I brought it up. I'm, I'm yeah. wondering how how good the dynamic mic is at only picking me up. Yeah, I didn't hear else. it. Uh, okay. If anybody else heard it and wants to type on the, um, we're still in the chat room. Anyway, I think we should quit recording and get off the post game. Um, okay. Oh, FDR married his cousin, not first cousin, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah, and most of the British royal family. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. okay. So when everybody, when we go off and go back to the uh, the rotating twenty four seven fiends episodes, you may have to hit refresh again. But let mm-hmm. me know in the mm-hmm. in the chat room if you do, if it starts sounding weird. Well, here's the other thing with Christians. If you believe in Christian theology, uh, <coughs> humanity was founded on sisters and brothers, boning, two people, and man, having babies. Yeah. Well, Adam and Eve were not. They were like yes, uh, zygotes, yes, but, man. But, they were but like. If they were the only human being, if they were the only human beings, and they had uh, their a litter siblings of had to have sex. Yeah, a litter. Right. Well, let's. Yeah. We basically just did the whole cast that I'm planning on doing. So anyway, <laughs> I'll send you some links. We can research it. Um, cool, man. It's been a good cast. I think that's all my hey, questions. I'll call you if I have anything else. Take right, care, Kyle. Right. Later, yep. everybody. Take yeah. care, everybody. Bye. Peace. Peace. All right. Let me put this microphone back. Okay, now I'm going to go out of the bot. Yes, out of the bot, and then restart the feed. That's right, folks. Restart oh. the bot. All right. There we go. All right. Turn it off. Now I got to restart the bot. Really do, we ha- do we have to do a post post game or no, are we done? No. Okay. Um, hang cool, on man. just a minute. Let me stop. Hey. Let me do something real quick here. See if this is working. Uh, hang on. Uh, I like how no one calls in. Maybe no one will call in now that we have a the thing. That'd be pretty nice, I think. Uh, we had that one call. That was a good call, too. Oh, yeah, we did. I wasn't listening. So, yeah. So, okay, that's the feed and streaming link. Let me see what we got on the feed and streaming link. Yeah, yeah it's working. It's working perfect. We got about Whoa. 10 listeners on right We got 10 listeners on right now. We got seven cool. now. They went away. But we had 10. Cool. That was a good test, man. And uh, yeah. I think we worked out the bugs. I hope so. Yeah. Do we still need to do another midweek test? Or do you want to just come out of the gate um, on Thursday? We could also try. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. I was going to say what? we could do our Monday show live. Nah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because then, no, because I really want to have one a week where there's like no distractions, you know? Okay. Where okay. we just do what we want to do. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. G- gain staging. I didn't know this. Uh... All right. So I'm going to go off of uh, the Fiend here. Um, feed. So tomorrow, uh, I had some. What time do you want to do it? Well, I think I had I'm pretty somewhere... open all day. Are you? Okay. Unless it's hella doing... early. How early is hella early? Because I had a thing I what wanted to do at 3.30. Uh, so so I'd like to do it ideally by 11, starting at noon. By 11, my time. Noon, noon, noon yeah, your, time? 10. your time. Oh, no. 11, my time? 11 I could time. probably do it by 11. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to set a clock for that. Or so why, don't we set, why don't we say, why don't we say be, be up at 11 and uh, we'll probably slowly get ready and we'll do it like half hour after that or something. 11.30 your time or my yeah. time? 11.30 your time? 11, 11.30 your time. 12.30 right. my 11, time. 30, I think I can swing that. I'm going to wake up early. All right. All right. Yep. Cool you know, we could, use, we could use the um, the chat room for our talking when we're doing that cast too, but then people would be talking to us, so we want to do it on the pigeon, I think. <laughs> yeah, let's do it on the pigeon. Yep. As per use. Yeah. All right. I'm still recording, man. I can't believe. Did I say anything? Want to contribute to Liberty but short on cash? You can help the Freedom Fiends without even spending a post-1964 dime. Download uTorrent and start seeding Fiends episodes and DVDs to help keep us drone-proof. There's a Torrent Club link at the top of FreedomFiends.com. There you'll find our Torrent RSS feed and instructions to grab past episodes and automatically download new ones, even while you're away from the computer. You'll also get special episodes of The Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo days or even weeks before regular podcast subscribers who aren't torrenting. Leave your computer on, seating the torrents while you're at work or asleep. The more people seating The Fiends, the more drone-proof we'll be when the boot comes down.